been on that thread then of of relationships um obviously you and your your husband jordan have had a long relationship you've been through a lot together i've heard jordan on podcasts and interviews be brought to tears when talking about your relationship and and the love that you have what do you think the core principles of a happy and healthy relationship are well when jordan first asked me to marry him uh he told me that if we didn't tell the truth our relationship couldn't work mm -hmm. and so that was going to be and that was when he was 25 something like that uh and um so that was the first thing that we were to tell the truth and i hadn't really understood what that meant i first took that to mean my truth in what the truth in in my relationships what i'm uh where my goals are to make sure that that was all truthful um, so that was the first, so honesty, honesty was paramount and he still talks about that as being very, very important. And so that is what got us started and really took us through the, uh, the other thing was that not, we, we didn't let, we didn't if there was a problem, we didn't just let it go. It might have taken three days <laughs> in the beginning to uncover what was happening because uh, we both were pretty strong he headed and probably didn't really want to admit that we had done anything to cause the trouble. So in the early days, but we, we didn't give up on it. Uh, he was very good at even though he doesn't like conflict, he's a very soft-hearted, very compassionate person, as you can tell uh, through his public image. He's a very compassionate person. Um, but he would, and knowing that this would be uncomfortable, he would still insist that we talk about it until we understood it. And that was really good. We got through a lot of trouble by perseverance and you know at the end of every mystery in the rosary you pretty much pray for perseverance it, it's all about trying again and getting up and trying again and getting up and trying again no matter what logic reason mathematics would probably suggest to us that there's no such thing as the one but I think everyone in relationships, they like to think there's a one. They like to, they want to find their one. And I think taking that logic and mathematic hat off, I like to believe in the one. So how did you know that your husband was the one? Um, well, we were very close friends. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed each other's company when we were kids. I thought he was, he was, smart back then he was fascinating to be around he had different ways of looking at things and and dissecting problems and you know when we were really little we played with a chemistry set you know we liked that and he really liked that and I got to be a part of that he taught me how to play chess when I was a little kid that was really great and I was five years younger than my siblings so I didn't really grow up with my family I grew up with my friends and he was one of the friends that I grew up with and I never got tired of being with him. And then when I left home when I was 18 and didn't really see him that much until I was in my 20s or my, my, my mid-20s. And I went to, he called me and had moved within a couple of hours of where I lived when we were in our 20s. Uh, and I went to visit him and he was getting his PhD. So it looked like he was getting his life together. He was uh, taking responsibility for himself and moving forward. And I thought, you know, if I don't marry him, I won't know what happens in his life as I do now. 
And so if I want to be, if I want to know what happens in his life, I'll have to marry him in order to be there. And, you know, I, his dad was my school teacher. He was a good father. So I thought Jordan would be a good father and he was interesting. And I wanted to be with somebody who was interesting. And so that's how I decided to marry him. He told his dad in grade five that he was going to marry me. So he decided a very long time ago. And I don't know when I learned that. I wasn't that young when I learned that. So it, it wasn't something that I knew about. But he was always there, you know, even when I wasn't seeing him, I was going home. Uh, I lived in Montreal and I was going home to Northern Alberta at Christmas. And he, his, his family lived in, in this little town too. When I got home, it was so often that he would come to see me that I would know within a half an hour of getting home that he would knock on my door. So he was a constant friend. Uh, so he was not easily gotten rid of, I'd say. But by the time I wanted to marry him, he was getting pretty popular with the women. So I thought I better marry him quick. You had to make you move quick. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, that's, that's beautiful. 